Volume 1, Chapter 21 of the Autobiography of Madame Kion. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Autobiography of Madame Kion by Jean Kion. Volume 1, Chapter 21. About this time I fell into a state of total privation, which lasted nearly seven years. I seemed to myself cast down like Nebuchadnezzar to live among beasts, a deplorable state, yet of the greatest advantage to me by the use which divine wisdom made of it. This state of emptiness, darkness, and impotency went far beyond any trials I had ever yet met. I have since experienced that the prayer of the heart, when it appears most dry and barren, nevertheless is not ineffectual nor offered in vain. God gives what is best for us, though not what we most relish or wish for. Were people but convinced of this truth, they would be far from complaining all their lives. By causing us death, he will procure us life. For all our happiness, spiritual, temporal, and internal, consists in resigning ourselves to God, leaving it to him to do in us and with us as he pleases, and with so much the more submission as things please us less. By this pure dependence on his spirit, everything is given us admirably. Our very weaknesses in his hand prove a source of humiliation. If the soul were faithful, to leave itself in the hand of God, sustaining all his operations, whether gratifying or mortifying, suffering itself to be conducted from moment to moment by his hand and annihilated by the strokes of his providence without complaining or desiring anything but what it has. It will soon arrive at the experience of the eternal truth, though it might not at once know the ways and methods by which God conducted it there. People want to direct God instead of resigning themselves to be directed by Him. They want to show Him a way instead of passively following with that wherein he leads them. Hence, many souls call to enjoy God himself, and not barely his gifts, spend all their lives in running after little consolations, and feeding on them, resting there only, making all their happiness to consist therein. If my chains and my imprisonment in any way afflict you, I pray that they may serve to engage you to seek nothing but God for himself alone, and never to desire to possess him but by the death of your whole selves, never to seek to be something in the ways of the Spirit, but choose to enter into the most profound nothingness. I had an internal strife which continually racked me. Two powers which appear equally strong seemed equally to struggle for the mastery within me. On the one hand, a desire of pleasing thee, O oh my God, a fear of offending and a continual tendency of all my powers to thee, 
on the other side, the view of all my inward corruptions. The depravity of my heart and the continual stirring and rising of self, what torrents of tears, what desolations have this cost me? Is it possible, I cried, that I have received so many graces and favors from God only to lose them? That I have loved Him with so much ardor, but to be eternally deprived of Him, that His benefits have only produced ingratitude, His fidelity being repaired with infidelity, that my heart has been empty of all creatures and created objects and filled with his blessed presence and love in order now to be wholly void of divine power and only filled with wanderings and created objects. I could now no longer pray as formerly. Heaven seemed shut to me and I thought justly. I could get no consolation or make any complaint, nor had I any creature on earth to apply to. I found myself banished from all beings without finding a support of refuge in anything. I could no more practice any virtue with facility. Alas, said I, is it possible that this heart formerly all on fire should now become like ice. I often thought all creatures combined against me. Laden with a weight of past sins and a multitude of new ones, I could not think God would ever pardon me, but looked on myself as a victim designed for hell. I would have been glad to do penances, to make use of prayers, pilgrimages, and vows, but still whatever I try for a remedy seemed only to increase the malady. I may say that tears were my drink and sorrow my food. I felt in myself such a pain as I never could bring any to comprehend, but such as have experienced it. I had within myself an executioner who tortured me without respite. Even when I went to church, I was not easy there. To sermons I could give no attention. They were now of no service or refreshment to me. I scarcely conceived or understood anything in them or about them. End of chapter 21, volume 1.